Hi friends, in this session let's continue to the next task. The next task for us is importing our actual source file data into target table. So in our last sessions we have completed downloading the source files from source URL and then we have extracted actual source into a location. So in this session let's integrate the actual source files data into target table. So let's go ahead and design the package to support that task. Now, the task that supports for data imports is data flow task, right? Drag that data flow task inside for each loop container and then map the precedence constraint from unzip source files to data flow task. Now open data flow task and source connection and then drag flat file source. Because our source files were in CSV format, we have to choose flat file source, right? Now double click on the flat file source, click new, and then change connection manager to our reasonable name like WP uh, source file connection, and then browse for file name, choose your source location. That is my source location is WhoisDB integration. This is where I have downloaded our source files, right? So choose CSV so that you will see the source files. Now select any one of these source files for initial mapping purpose. So initially, when we before we convert that as dynamic path, first we have to do it for one file as a static task. Then we can change that to dynamic so that it works for all the files. So let's make it for one file first. So let's choose your file name here and then go to text qualifier and enter double quotes here. So most of the source files, if the column data has a delimiter like comma or any special characters within the column data, then that comes within the double quotes. So enter double quotes here and go to columns. Now check all columns are aligning correctly here and then go to advanced. And notice by default SSIS flat file source updating 50 width, 50 characters width for all the columns, right? But some of these columns may have 500 or more than 500 or more than 50 characters length. So for those to consider, we have to update the column names, data types, sizes to required size. We have to increase the column data size. So let's change for all the columns here. Okay, so we have done with the changes. So now let's go ahead and click OK. Now go to columns. So you will see all the columns here and then click OK. Now we have configured our source connection, right? Now let's go to other destination and drag your target table destination. That is OLEDB connection. So because I am loading that into SQL Server, table so that connection will be OLEDB destination. So OLEDB destination double click and then select your OLEDB connection manager here if already exists then it shows otherwise you can click new you can choose your database. Go to data access mode and uh, you can choose table or view and then click new here and I want to create a new table because uh, I don't have any existing table I don't want to load into existing table. If you want to separate this process, you can create uh, this table first in the database uh, database, and then you can use that table to map directly. Otherwise, you can create like this. So it takes uh, all the data types and columns from the source here. So create table and I want to name it as uh, domain who is information or info, let me make it info. Now, domain name, I want to keep all the data types as is. Now click OK. Now go to mappings. So all columns are mapped. If you have different names in the source and destination, then the names you have to map it accordingly. OK, now click OK. Now let's go back to control flow and execute this data flow task only because we have configured it for only one task, one file, right? So in order to test first, 
let's execute the data flow task only whether it's uh, working correctly or not so it's loaded right so our task is successful now so let's make it dynamic now now go to data flow task and we have to change our flat file source connection because LEDB table connection will be always will remain always same because I want to load all the source files into one table so only file flat file source connection will be change right so let's go to WP source connection here and right click properties and then go to expressions and then property connection string right now go to expression now here so let's check whether we have any variable existing variable we can reuse for uh, defining this connection string so let me drag the target file connection here so it is showing our source connection but with zip look zip path zip file path but i want the raw file path the extracted file path right so the only change for raw file path our flat file source path and the zip path is dot gz right so i can reuse this by replacing that gz dot gz as empty string so i can replace that i can reuse this target file connection so i can replace like dot dgz comma with empty string so when we evaluate expression it shows only the source path so so now we made it dynamic by choosing connection string as target file connection so it is pointing to our source file connection so whenever it loops through for each loop container for each file it changes this connection for every loop for every file that we have in that folder in the source folder and then it loads into our table so it's mapped right so now let's go back here now this is dynamic now right so let's go to database again now let's refresh our tables to see our newly created table so let's choose select top thousand rows to see the data so the data in the previous run has been loaded right so now let's truncate this data in order to see truncate table in order to reload before reload our package let's truncate that table and then go back to SSIS package now let's rename it if you want rename and uh, import otherwise load data to domain who is table there is info table so okay now now let's go to source path and then let's remove all the files from here just in order to test so i would like to rerun the package i would like to execute the package to test all the tasks that we have configured so far is working correctly as we expected or not so let's execute the package to test again okay as you can see package execution completed with success so data has been loaded into table so our package is working as expected right so let's stop the package execution and go back to our database table and then check the data here again select star from our table so data has been loaded into our table right once the processing has been completed like once the data has been loaded into table we should archive these files into another location otherwise uh, every time when it reruns the package it again tries to load these files into target location right so let's archive these files let's include in another step in the package another task in the package to archive these files so that that is our next task See you in the next session. Thank you for watching my video.